sorry it took me so long to come back to this, but I released a video about how I had these two 255 watt Canadian solar panels set up and how when I put them in parallel, it actually got me or netted me less wattage into my battery than if they were in series. And I was very curious about that. It's a 12 volt battery. These are, you know, 30 volt panels, 24 volt panels. Um, and the manual states that you should run them in parallel, not series. And I got a lot of really good suggestions for things to try. So let's go through a few of them and see if we can tell why I was getting less wattage in parallel than in series. The first and I think the obvious one that I didn't think about was resistance in the wires. Because when I ran this test before, I had the same 10 gauge wires going out to the panels. And then I just ran a branch connector to run in parallel. So I had double the current running through the wires when I was in parallel versus series. And that could be where I was losing about 10 watts of my power was just in heat. In, the, in that. So what I've done here is run two sets of 10 gauge wires in. And yes, they're all plugged in here, but right now out of the array, everything is in series. And we can see that we were pulling in 382 watts. The EP Ever shows a fairly higher number, 502 watts. I don't know why it's bouncing back and forth, but you know. So um, this could come into play later because if it really is dropping from 502 watts on the input to 383 watts on the output, then that's all heat that has to be dissipated by the heat sink. And that's something else that I'm gonna get to here in a minute. But with that's at 378, 380 watts, let's go throw this thing into parallel. As we can see, every wire has its own connector and its own wire all the way back to the charge controller now. So we are in parallel. And the charge controller is still figuring itself out here. As mentioned by Mr. Brad Cagle, these EP Evers seem to track very slowly. So it seems to have settled at 383 watts, which is still higher than we were getting and series. Well, so okay, so that swaps. So this is higher. Let's do the ABA. Let me go back and put it in series. It seems, seems to be creeping up. Let's go back to series real quick and make sure that we are still at 380 watts. I have dropped them into a series configuration. EP Ever is figuring itself out here. It should go up into the, the 50s on the voltage. What's interesting is that this does seem to pull every now and again for the data because the Victron will actually show the data before the EP Ever screen shows it. 383, so it came up a little bit. I mean, honestly, it's, it's within a margin of error at this point. When I was testing this last, there was a much larger margin. It was 10 to 15 watts, and it wasn't as uh, visible on the video because I had waited a few minutes before I plugged in and started recording, but it uh, does appear that the branch connectors were causing some resistance. So let's try that. Let's throw some branch connectors in there and see if that in fact drops my parallel wattage below the series. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, using God's environment to do tests is not very consistent. So we are in parallel with branch connectors and hitting 390 watts. So let's go back to parallel without branch connectors and see what it's doing there. Here we are, parallel without branch connectors, getting the same as parallel with branch connectors. <clears throat> Here we are back in our series configuration, making 397 watts. <sighs> Nothing conclusive yet. Back into parallel, not using the branch connectors, so we're using all four wires. 392. So based on that, my earlier results using the branch connectors are still valid. Um, we just went up to 401 watts. Still valid, in my opinion. It still does seem to be better in series than in parallel. However, better is, is relative. So now I'm going to do is get the thermal camera out. I'm going to set a timer and let this thing run in parallel where it's connected now for say 20 minutes 
and get the thermal camera out, see what temperature this heat sink is on the back. And then we'll go to series configuration, run it for 20 minutes, and then come back to parallel and run it for 20 minutes. And we'll get temperatures from all three and see how the charge controller is handling heat dissipation between the two. Okay, so just for reference, it has been chilly this week. So you can see that our ground, where the sun's not hitting it, is in the 30s, which is kind of weird for Texas. But anyway, um, so up here, we've got this, the box that's just sitting here at an ambient temperature, and we've got the back of our EP Ever, which appears to be about 62, 63 degrees Fahrenheit, of course. So we will now start our 20 minute timer and see what that rises to. All right, so just an update, we've got panels all connected in parallel using their own wires. We're using all four wires into the EP Ever. I have a temperature sensor here clipped onto the back of the heat sink there. I did use a thermal camera just to make sure that the heat sink seems to be heated evenly. Um, but then I figure this is gonna give us a more accurate reading time to time. So we're sitting at about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's been on here for 20 minutes running in parallel. So I'm just gonna run out there and change to series. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. I'm really not seeing any temperature rise. And I remembered that one of the suggestions was that I really need to load this thing down to 60 amps or whatever it'll do um, to, to, to really heat it up. And that seems reasonable. It was fun to see though, that it really is not gaining any appreciable temperature pushing 400 watts into the battery. That's, that's pretty slick. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a second set of panels. I am gonna use branch connectors there, set of wires in, branch connectors there, set of wires in, and we should be pushing um, the full 750 watts that this thing is capable of into the battery. So I'm gonna get that set up real quick. And we will go ahead and go into, as I said, branch connectors. So we'll go back into parallel mode um, to kind of restart the test. Okay, so here we are, four panels all in parallel. As we can see, our voltage is at 28, which is about the max power voltage of those panels. We are showing 700 and we're at 750 there for a second, which according to the label on this guy, according to this label, it will do 750 watts, 60 amps. Uh, it's doing 54 amps, 55. So, doing well. Temperature is rising just a tad, which is good. I kind of wanted to see that go up. I don't know why, but it did. It's more power, it's gonna go up. So, let's see what it does here in 20 minutes. I'll leave it for 20 minutes, all in parallel, and we'll go from there. All right, so here we are, about 20 minutes in. We're at 81 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna go ahead and swap over to serial and serial. They'll still be paralleled together, because I gotta keep it under 100 volts or 150 volts or so. So we have four panels out there, 1,000 watts, 1,010 watts, really. Uh, we're in 2S2P, which means our voltage is up at 58.6. We're charging a 12 volt battery and our temperature is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about what it was when I had all the panels in parallel where my voltage was down in the 20s. So this was the B part of the ABA test. So we're gonna go back to all parallel and see what the temperature does then. And here we are again, we've hit another 20 minutes and we're at 81.6 degrees Fahrenheit. It's just, it's very interesting because we have firsthand reports that running a more in series causes higher temperatures, but I'm not actually seeing that. I'm actually seeing slightly lower temperatures when my panels are in series and in parallel slightly higher temperatures. All right, Godzilla, you mentioned looking at things with a thermal camera to see where the energy is being lost. So ask and ye shall receive. Um, let's see, our ground, our cement here is about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Our, our branch connector is 60. Let's get a little closer to it. <clears throat> show you guys what we're looking at here so shows super red on there but really gets up to 65 this one 
66. So, I mean, obviously, yes, there is some heat being lost, energy being lost as heat. Let me move Let this guy twist it around so I can actually see him. Go check the other branch connectors because this is one set of panels let's see the other one because who knows could be that some branch connectors are worse than others it's reasonable to assume the other ones were reading up to 66 this is about the same let's see what this one reads <clears throat> Yeah, that's 66. What is our wire? Cold. All right, what do we got here? We've got our battery connections are on the left. That's where we're getting a lot of heat. And then in the middle is the negative for, for the PV as well as the battery. And then this is PV positive. So I'd say we're definitely seeing some heat on the battery side, but that shouldn't really matter uh, between series and parallel on the battery side. We're really looking for the solar side. You can definitely tell where the heat sink starts on this thing. I suppose it could be cool to take it apart. More like what you were saying, look at the traces. We have to see, I've not pulled one of these apart yet. Let's see what it looks like. You can definitely see the, uh, the battery wires there. Shunt's nice and cold. It's rated for 500 amps. You can see my uh, my inverter wire there that's just keeping a load on the battery. Ooh, that's toasty. That's only running at like 500 watts. That's a 600 watt inverter. Greater than 260 Fahrenheit. That thing's melting. Yep, that's 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 hot. That's real hot. This uh. Two gauge wire is nice and cold though. <laughs> What's interesting is it seems to be the connector. Because like down here it's super hot. Up here it's perfectly reasonable. So I might just need to recrimp that connector. I noticed that on the red wire for this as well. This is the this is the wire that came with this inverter. And I've always been happy with the Ames stuff, but they apparently uh, undersized something here. I think it might just be a bad crimp, perhaps. I don't know. Travis pointed out that I really should do the same test that I did, you know, earlier in the video, but with more panels. So this is 1,010 watts worth of panels. Currently have them set up two in series into that set of wires, two in series into that set of wires. So you can see here we're hitting that 57 volts and 14 amps. We are getting 676 watts. I'm going to go ahead and pop those into all parallel. So I'll throw branch connectors in there, branch connectors in there. We'll drop this down into the 20s for voltage and see what power we're getting then. Okay, so we've got branch connectors there, branch connectors there. We're in parallel all the way back. We can see we're in the 26 volt range, 30 amps. And we are generating more power than in series. So for the sake of ABA scientific testing, we'll put this back in series real quick and make sure that's right. I'm back in series, 679, 680. So yes, when it's fully loaded, it does appear that running in parallel is better. That's good data. I really appreciate you guys coming up with the other things that I should test here to see. And y'all tell me if I'm concluding this wrong, 
but it looks like when you're running this charge controller at about half load, that running in series is fine and possibly better, but when you're under full load, it's better to just be in parallel. Um, I don't know, I, th I think I'm reading that data right. It's interesting nonetheless. I don't know that it's, I mean, well, under full load, there's a significant portion that you're losing by running in series. But then again, it's a lot of wire to run too. So it's just data to use, right?